well, this is a Malaysia Mirror Easy Group and we welcome everyone, not just Malaysian, but everyone outside Malaysian as well. Okay, let me go to the next slide. Not moving. Okay, so it's July 7, 2021. We're going to have this event from now, 5 o'clock until 6.30. And there are a lot of things that we want to share ahead, so please bear with us. As for the agenda, okay, now I'm just welcoming you and sharing you about what we have. And soon, uh, very soon, we're going to have sharing by three gentlemen, okay, uh, Joshua, Ami, and Anand. Okay, I will let you meet with them uh, soon, okay. Um, and this is us, myself and Francis. So let us introduce ourselves first. Uh, let me begin, and then I will pass uh, over to Francis. Uh, for those who know me, hello, and for those who don't know me, hello, hello. <laughs> now you know me. My name is Nurul Fatia Abdul Um My academic background is actually uh, software and animation. Yes, I study software and animation from Multimedia University. So things like Miro is something that of course I love because when I was studying back then, there's no such thing. I, I, I learn something different, okay? Um, but professionally, for the past 20 years, I specialize in performance management and learning design, okay? And my goal is to help more learning professionals, facilitators, teachers, and leaders to build a creative and interactive learning space. And I'm not talking about virtual only, okay? I'm talking about both virtual and face-to-face -face because you can be creative uh, in both spaces, okay? Uh, yourself is your own limit to your own creativity, okay? And I am a big fan of anything fun and halal, okay? Having said that, uh, <laughs> nice meeting all you know, of you. <laughs> you know what, that could, that, that's tempting me to say, right? I'm, I'm right. a big fan of all things fun and... <laughs> <laughs> Shamini is going, no, no, don't say it. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Nuru, please go on. <laughs> no worries. So anyway, um, if this is uh, my very first time seeing you or meeting you, then let's make sure that this is not the last time. All right. Okay. With that, I hand over to Francis to introduce herself. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really, really excited to be here. Um, uh, my name is Francis and my family name is pronounced G, like as though it was the letter G. Uh, I originally hail from a small town on the other side of the South China Sea in a small town called Kuching. So I am started out as a small town boy. I'm now based in Kuala Lumpur and have been now for quite a while. And my goal is to get back into a small town, which is uh, a small little town called Kuala Kububaru, about an hour north of Kuala Lumpur. So that's my trajectory currently. Uh, my background is in psychology, applied research in psychology. So I'm very much interested in uh, uh, performance in all kinds of systems, but that was a long time ago. I sort of accidentally fell into training in 1990. Uh, and since then have been doing all sorts of things related to training, coaching, teaching, uh, been a swim coach before, and eventually I ended up doing my own thing since 2001. I've been doing virtual training now, started doing virtual training about seven years ago, seven, eight years ago now. And how is that linked to what I do with Miro? In those old days, virtual training was really, 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 really bad. And if anybody had done virtual training six, seven years ago, you would know what I mean. Broadband was non-existent. The platforms were as crappy as you could possibly imagine. And the courseware was equally bad, equally bad. They just basically took all the standard content and pushed onto a, into a PowerPoint. It's just there. So I've been innovating and trying to make it as interesting and engaging as possible in live classes since. And that's what led me to Miro. I've been on Miro now for coming to three years plus now. Um, and of course, last year was like a, like a turning point for how we all get onto Miro. And one thing after one thing leads to another, and here am I with Nurul starting up the Malaysian chapter of the Miro Users Group. And I'm really, really excited that all of you are here with us. And my hope 
And my prayer is that all of you will join us in the Malaysia user group. And uh, I was just chatting with Nurul earlier. Our goal is to make our events famous, even more famous than Joshua's and Isman's, all right? So that's our challenge. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's a little bit about me. And before I hand back to uh, before I hand back to Nurul, um, if you can, um, maybe it would be quite interesting if you could rename yourself on Zoom from the location that you are from. For so, for example, if you look at me, I'm Francis G, and I'm from KL, so that we get a feel from where you are dialing in to connect with us as well. All right, so that's something for you to do while I hand over to Nurul. Thank you, Francis. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question, right? I mean, you've been using Miro longer than me. In your opinion, who are better designer in Miro? Uh, the male or the female? Oh, that's a tricky one. And I could get into trouble here. Like I was going to talk about non-halal stuff. <laughs> but I'm tempted to say guys, because guys usually get the hang of the technical aspects of the interface uh, faster and they experiment more. So I'm going to go with guys. Mm. And you? No, but men, okay, fine. You are more technical, but girls or ladies are more creative, isn't it? Girls, come, agree with me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's test. Let's test our theory. Who are better at designing in Miro, uh, whether it's a girl or it's a boy, okay? So let me... Stop sharing screen. By the way, for those who do not know Miro, I'm just the presentation slide just not just now. Uh, is using Miro. I don't use PowerPoint slide at all. Bye bye PowerPoint. Okay, I'm going to invite all of you uh, to I'm still sharing screen right to our board, the Malaysia Miro user group board. Okay, and when you I'm going to give you the link later. Just uh, bear with me. When you click the link, you will immediately come to this space. Okay, so as you can see in this space, there's a male side and there's a female side. Now, your job to prove our theory is to build a book flower bouquet, no, the stand bouquet, the stand flower bouquet, right? Okay, so the rule is you need to use every single element in here, okay, and put it here. Make it nice, lah, so then we know whether male or female are better, okay? So we're not going to go into a breakout room whatsoever, you're just going to use your own creativity individually and, and bring it here, okay? And then um, there's also a message card because clearly this is a Kedai Bunga Tanjung or Tanjung Florist, okay? And you can write any um, message to Malaysia Mirror User Group uh, on this message card, okay? Everybody ready? Uh, no, do they have the link? No, not yet. I'll give you the link soon. Okay, for those of you who have not used Miro yet, you may be slightly feel intimidated by the app. If you're familiar with Jamboard, Jamboard have a border. Okay, but Miro do not have a border because this is an infinite board. Okay, so you need to know how to zoom. So there are two things about zoom that I want to share before I leave. I bring you into this board. The first and foremost, you click the button up here, yang garis garis tu. And then you click navigation mode and you can choose whether you are using mouse or you're using a trackpad. Okay, so to make life easier for you. So I'm using a trackpad. Okay, and then if you want to zoom in and out, okay, you can use a trackpad. If you use trackpad, then you can do this. Or if you use mouse and your mouse have scroller, you can use your mouse scroller as well. Or you can go to the corner here, uh, bottom right, and you can click the minus and plus button to move in and out. Okay, and then, uh, oops, to work on this, if you want to move this, make sure your cursor is look like a cursor, not hand. Okay, something like this. Ta-da, that's how to do it. And if you want to write on this sticky note, you just click one, double click and start typing. That's all. Pretty easy, right? Okay, thank you so much, guys. Okay, let me go back to my presentation. Okay, so because we have a lot of things that are coming up. So I'm going to let um, Francis to introduce what is or who is Miro Malaysia User Group. So over to you, Francis. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you very much, Nuru. Um, let me get my get my slides into place, and we shall have a look. Um, you want to share? Uh, you want to share screen? I, you want to share screen? Well, you. Why don't you just go to the first slide and I'll talk? Okay. That way we don't have cool. to we don't have to switch around and so on. Oh, sorry, it should go to this one. It's fun. Is that a baby lion behind you? Yeah. Or is it a pretend lion behind you? <laughs> it's it's a it's a fairy tale Singapore lion. <laughs> Uh, okay. okay, so just very briefly, when when Nuru when Nuru and I, uh, well, I a bit of history. Nuru was the one who who got in touch with me and and mooted the idea of uh, starting a starting a mirror user group in Malaysia. Um, so we started to talk about. Why would we want to? I mean, we had a we had a perfectly good good Asia Pac one that's been started by Joshua and Isman, and that was that had gained traction, and they were running things uh, regularly. Oh, by the way, guys, if you've not attended those events, do go and sign up for some of those events. They are now diversifying into different kinds of of areas of practice and use cases. So do check them out as well. But coming back to us, we thought about it and we thought, yeah, it's, um, it'll be a good thing to build a local community because then uh, it also allows us to make friends and network. So basically what we then end up doing was think about why would we start one in Malaysia? And basically the idea then was to start a community of mirror users actually based in Malaysia or in a, and of course, we know that because it's a virtual user group, basically anyone in the world could come and join us. And we do, we do see people coming to join events like this from different parts of the world, especially if there's a topic that's of interest, right? Uh, so we welcome anyone who is, um, who is uh, in Malaysia or anyone who is connected to any one of us in Malaysia as well. So you're very, very welcome there. So currently it's headed by Nurul and myself. Um, my, my goal and my hope is that at some point I become redundant and we have new blood and fresh blood coming in perhaps in the next year or so. So that's a little bit about us, right? Um, what, are, what are our goals? What are our goals? So basically, we are looking at really bringing more people in to the community. Uh, so currently, the few of the the bunch of us who, who get together and talk about Miro tend to be in the training industry. And we recognize that there are lots of other people who are Miro users as well, who are not in the training industry. And I think there's always a great opportunity to learn from other users in other industries to see how they use it. And it allows us to innovate and leapfrog in the way we grow and become better in what we use. So we want to welcome users from whatever field of expertise that you're in. We want to build a community where we help each other innovate and we're passionate about how we use Miro. And of course, then to connect with other users because like as a, as a trainer, I love seeing how other trainers use Miro to do, to do some of the things that I do. And every time I get together with somebody else, I learn something else, uh, which is great. So um, how, what's, our, what's our plan? Uh, our activities is that we will have like four core activities uh, every, uh, throughout the year, one every quarter. And that's first week of every quarter. The, Plan is as we get more people in different areas of uh, in different areas of expertise or use case that we want to help organize those. So those there might be some people who are in design. There are some people who are in management or agile. Um, we want to help get those people together, even if it's two or three people, get them together, whether it's in a formal meetup or in an informal group. That's the plan, and. Who knows, maybe one day we'll have an open conference and think of interesting topics for that will make people come and part participate. So that's basically the main thing. Our, our next, next slide, please, Neural. So what's our promise? Learn, grow, and have fun while making new friends. So that's very briefly about who we are and what we're about. 
So that's it. Okay, and uh, usually in Malaysia, you know, when we launch something new, you know, we have cut ribbon, right? We, we have some VIPs go there, cut ribbon, say thank you. And then uh, sometimes there's a, there's a dragon dance, la, lion dance, la, or, and also uh, no, we will notice there's a lot of flower uh, outside the shop. So for Malaysia Mary is a group, we have this. Thank you for bringing us flowers and this, with this, we officially launched uh, Malaysia Miro User Group. Uh, lah sikit. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, uh, there is mine. We have some, uh, if you can see it's mine in the gallery view, they are the, some, apa nama? Uh, what do you call it? Fireworks. Fireworks. Uh, fireworks. Fireworks. Bunga api. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Terima <bunga> kasih. <laughs> got bunga here, got bunga api there, got lion here and there. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. And actually, all the flowers that chosen here are native to not native to Malaysia are available in Malaysia. So trying as much as I could to source for Malaysian only flowers, okay? And some of our main uh, uh, hari lah, hari raya, hari Christmas, and Dipawali and Gawai and. Uh, all sorts of festivals. Okay, so let's, uh, thank you so much Francis for the introduction and we hope to have more and more people joining us on board. Okay, so give me a second. I just want to introduce uh, today's speaker because we are ready to hear sharing from them, right? Are you ready to hear sharing from them? No, yes? Let me introduce them first. Um, okay. Okay, so we have with us a kick-ass lecturer or Joshua Ng. Okay, um, I'll let Joshua introduce himself nanti before his sessions. All right, so first we have Joshua Ng, who is a psychology lecturer, and he's going to share how he used Miro with his students. And then we have a very savvy leader, Amir Shazlan. Uh, he works at Petronas Digital and he used Miro in his day-to-day -day job. Okay, and finally we have uh, Versatile facilitator Anand Marganlu and he used uh, Miro for, of course, uh, for his training. All right, so all three of them will introduce themselves more before their session. Okay, so now uh, before I hand over to Joshua for his uh, for his um, sharing, I just want to share with you some of the things that we put on the board. Okay, this is something that you can fill up as and when the event happening. Okay. Um, not so far from the Kedai Bunga, a flower shop, okay, if you zoom in and out, there will be uh, some cards, okay, so in these cards, we would love to know who you are, so please put your LinkedIn uh, profile here so we can continue to be connected, okay, and we want to hear a lot of your ideas for future Miro user group. As Francis had shared earlier, we want something fun, something that we can learn together. And we want to go not just among trainers, but we want to see how Miro are practiced in different industry by different professions and things like that. So please, if you have any ideas that uh, or things that you want to see in our uh, Miro user group, please uh, put here. How to put an idea, you can use a sticky note, uh, dekat tepi ni. Uh, you can see a toolbar. Uh, something yang berlipat ni, if you move your mouse, there's a sticky note, you can just click and come here and type, okay? Uh, we want to know how do you mirror if uh, you are already using it, so please write down, uh, there's a sample here like what is your industry, what is your role and how you use mirror at work. Uh, if you would love to be featured in our next mirror user group, you want to be a speaker, you want to share something, uh, please put your name here as well. And if you are interested to be part of Miro User Group crew, you want to be part of this uh, super cool, awesome, famous team member. <laughs> so please write your name in this crew uh, section here. And finally, uh, please rate us with your emoji. Happy ke, tak happy ke, sedih ke, and, and whatnot. Yeah? So you can choose as many emojis Rasanya. you want. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the, only thing, the only thing I will add to that is I would, I would really love to hear um, which industry or area of practice that you are in. Uh, mm -hmm. So do, do fill out that yellow, orangey cut, turmeric color cut over there because that gives me an idea of um, 
what kind of events that I can organize or what kind of speakers I can invite in for future events. Okay. I think it's time for Joshua. Yeah, Maru? it's time for Joshua. Joshua, I'll hand over to you. I'm going to, I will stop share so you can uh, take over. Okay, Thank Joshua, you. all yours. Please introduce yourself, yeah. Sure. All right. So as Nuro has um, introduced at the start, my name is Joshua. So I come similar uh, background with Francis in psychology as well. And over the past few years, I decided to pursue um, in sports psychology because I was interested around working with athletes in the sports scene and helping them in terms of mental performance. Um, so what has happened over the years is I co-founded with my partner, um, a consultancy based in Malaysia, where we work with athletes and coaches to help them with sport uh, psychology service. And what one thing that's interesting that happened, because I still keep connected with my lecturers and my dean back in my degree days uh, of university. And what happened like shortly after MCO kicked in, like last year, early last year, a lot of my lecturers that used to teach me resigned because they struggled to pivot from their normal teaching or lecturing in a physical classroom and try to adapt it into a virtual classroom, right? And because of the connection, I start to get to know that struggle and with that Dean later on just invited me with the opportunity to start um, lecturing for the new students uh, in that semester there, right? So I decided to take on that challenge. Um, it's been two semesters that I've been teaching. And so right now I'm just gonna share a little bit of what I've been teaching with my fellow students um, here. All right. So we normally associate lectures as being something that's very long, very boring. The lecturers often just talk for the next two to three hours and the students just sit down listen and probably take some notes um, here and there, all right? So that's what happens in a physical lecture. But you couple it right now with virtual uh, lectures, the problems gets uh, intensified, right? Not only as a lecturer, uh, I struggle with that designer engaging or interesting class, but because of the norms these days, students have that habit of just turning off their camera, right? So as a lecturer, I struggle to, to know, are you actually there? Right, uh, and what I observe from other lecturers is they start to cold call, right? Francis, are you there? Nura, are you there, right? And short term, it, it works, but over time, especially as a lecturer, if I have to work with my students for the next three months, it's a very painful thing to always cold call week by week, all right? So we're gonna do like an icebreaker exercise here. And um, after that, during the debrief, I'll use that chance to explain about how can you use this icebreaker to start to build a very quick rapport with my students, even though I can't see them you know, in, in the cameras. All right. So with that, let me just share my screen. And I believe Nuro has opened up a new frame on the right side here. So let me zoom in to what you'll be doing for shortly. So this icebreaker that I introduced my students to do right at the start is to come up with their own personal name card, right? So in student, they have their own student ID card. So I kind of like just transported or used that idea and tried to get them to create one in Miro. So you can see here's a workout example of, of my own personal name card, right? I have my picture here, my name at the bottom, along with some graphics or emojis that kind of describes me who I am um, as a person, right? So. And to do this, so you all actually have a chance to uh, give it a try here. You're probably now Miro masters or experts at this point here, but I'm just gonna go through very briefly about how you can run this, all right? So starting off, you wanna put your name and I can see like Anand there, all he needs to do is just double click on it, right? And you will be able to click on that uh, name, right? If you can't, you can always use the sticky notes or even the shapes to create a rectangle like this. And you can type your own names over there. And you can change the colors based on what kind of colors you want. So let me choose purple for now here. So that's very easy coming up with your name. Secondly, you want to come up with your picture, right? Some of you in your own laptops or desktop might already have certain profile pictures, right? And you can easily just um, upload it from your computer through this button. 
Or if like me, I can just go to my Facebook profile and I just control C and control V, right? So just copy and paste it onto Miro. Yeah, so I can just copy image here and then control V to paste it. Oops, too big. So all you need to do then, is, if it's too large, then you can just resize it and then move your picture to any of the card space that you want to put, all right? So that's the second task, all right? And the third and the last task is to come up with several icons or graphics that describes you as a, as a person, right? Um, from what I know, uh, Miro have decided not to disable the Google image uh, search for today. So we are, while we can't do that, there's always other ways to compensate, right? You can go to Google images and you can type out whatever uh, images that describe you. So let's just say I'm someone who loves sports. All right. And same thing, I can just click on a photo and I can copy my image, go back to Miro and control V to paste it. All right. So that, and I encourage you to come up with more than just one picture, right? Because it, one picture alone is never enough to tell who we are as a person, right? So I think five minutes is a good amount of time and I can see some of you all have already got started. All right, so just go for it. And later on, we'll just, you know, walk through together at this gallery to see one another's uh, name card. Very good job, uh, good work that you have put out in this um, icebreaker activity here. Um, you know, I, I want to really hear a little bit, but I think it's best to use the remaining time to move on and share more about what other learning activities I have done um, in Miro, right? So just allow me to grab your screens. And this time I'm gonna share with you the board that I've worked with with my students uh, last semester, right? And it's a very similar board to what you have just done in that icebreaker. So I'm just gonna zoom in to some of my students uh, work here, right? You can see that very simple, right? They can come up with their name, pictures and certain photos. And I got to know like, for example, this student here, before she was a student, she was an air stewardess. Um, so mm -hmm. that's something very interesting that would create more conversations throughout that semester um, there. And I also use this activity as a way to onboard my students into Miro, right? This is the first time I've introduced Miro to them. And this is the kind of quality or output they can come up with being a first time Miro uh, users, right? So it just, it just kills two birds with one stone here, getting them to be fluent with Miro. And number two, to build that connection or rapport between me as a lecturer and my students, All right? So the way I teach my lectures or design my lectures, it's I like to break down, like there's a teach segments where I would use the typical PowerPoint slides to, to teach. And then I would move my students in Miro to start working together in learning activities, maybe certain group reflections or to come up with some of their research um, there. So I'm gonna show you some examples right now. I'm just gonna zoom out and move to another space right on this side. Okay. It's a little bit slow mirror, so just need to wait for a while to calibrate itself. So. Okay, so here it is. So That's I, right. you also you also need to get a Mac Mini, I think. <laughs> possible, possible. Yeah. So this is a, an example of me quickly getting my students to start working in groups, right? I can use like Zoom or in my case, I use uh, Google Classroom because that was what the uni uh, subscribed, right? Google Classroom doesn't have breakout room. So, but I come up with an alternative where I just create more um, meeting links uh, for them to join different rooms, right? And in each of their breakout room, they then just come up with, um, this is a discovery exercise. They come up with what are some examples of professions that they know around psychology, right? And very easily, they can just pick up some sticky notes and within their own group space, they, cut, they start to list out 
um, whatever professions um, they know, right? A very simple starting exercise. And this also gets them to start being fluent in using sticky notes because that is one of the major functions that I normally design for my learning activities. And I could even do an individual base uh, work after that, where for this learning activity, I was, yeah, I got them to start constructing their own personal pathway of how they want to aspire or pursue um, their profession, right? And you can see that this is an individual space and I just created a few areas for them to start charting out their aspiration, their pathway, and to do a little bit of self-reflections around what, what are some of the areas they want to uh, improve or grow on, right? Being from a student and then probably after they graduate, they want to be a, um, an applied psychologist also um, here, right? So these are very simple group individual um, activities that as a lecturer or you as a trainer, uh, you probably have done quite a lot of it, right? In, other than that, sometimes in lectures, I want them to do certain research as pre-work or homework uh, beyond that two hour or three hour lecture, right? So what I did here was I just created an empty space and I've divided my students into groups and in their own free time, right? Before or after class, they work as a group and they can go to Google, right? Or their own textbook and they start researching and putting out those key information that I want them uh, to put on here, right? So in this case, if you are familiar with psychology, this topic here is about what are the um, first theories in psychology, right? You have your Sigmund Freud, uh, John Watson, and so on here, right? So one group, for instance, here, they have to come out or research the theory of structuralism, right? And there's a few areas that need, they need to research on in terms of what are some of the main concepts, how did it first develop or originate? And then what's the relevance today, right? It being a first uh, or traditional theory um, there. And then when the students come back to my lecture, I use that time as a discussion, right? When my students have the opportunity now to share their work and other students can put up questions to further uh, enrich those discussion um, during the class itself, all right? So, as a lecturer, this cuts me off from having to go through a, probably a, easily an hour of teaching, right? Going through all the PowerPoint slides, but instead I just get my students to do the work, right? The research and then they share. And me as a lecturer, I just add what is necessary, right? Or highlight certain key points that they have come up with. When it comes to heavy teaching, um, sometimes I need to make sure that my students understand certain key terms, right? certain definitions uh, within that psychology um, topic. So here's a, a very traditional example of a terms and definition um, activity, right? Where they just match the different terms to the correct definition. You can see that I created a team space. They can put their names on that space and they start moving those cards. So these are all movable and they just match with the correct terms on the top, right? So an example of an empty one that my students um, would work from would be something like this here. Oh, just a little bit more to the right. Yeah. <laughs> Use the map, Joshua. Use the map. <laughs> oh, no, now it's too much to the right. <laughs> uh, that's right. Use the map. Uh... You need to come and have more tutorials with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I hope it stops now. Okay. Just got to zoom in now. Oh, no, too much now. But Use anyway, the map. <laughs> no, the problem is it's just lagging um, in, in my board here. Yeah, so you can see I've sorted out at random like the different cards in gray here. And the students work together um, in breakout rooms and they just click a card and they start moving it, right? Which 
to whichever terms they are correct. And then later on, when I gather everyone back into the main meeting room, and then I just review the answers and any probably terms and deaths they got wrong, that is a good opportunity to start discuss and probably clarify certain um, key knowledge um, there. Right? And it, them being college students, I want them to, uh, well, we, we do hate knowledge, but at the same time, we want our students to be able to analyze or to contextualize uh, their information into practical settings of present uh, moments, right? So there are times where I will get my students to reflect about what they have learned, um, usually after um, a two hour lecture. And I then would create a case study, right? Where they can, after they have all the hate knowledge that they have learned, right? They start to be able to test whether they can apply those knowledge into a, a case scenario um, here. So I actually described the case. Um, so it, it being a psychology, uh, is usually case studies around uh, mental disorders um, here. So this clouds here are all different case studies of, of mental disorders. And what I got my students to work on is to start to come up with what are some possible interventions or, or solutions to solve that case study, right? So this is the part where they reflect back on what they have learned and start to apply it into a context there. And lastly, just one last thing that I want to show. It's what I call a reflection board. And you as trainers, you would at times do this as well, right? Because you want your participants to take a step back and realize, okay, what sort of key learnings that I can take away um, after this training here, right? So after a class, I can get my students to reflect on one of the topic like this. So one of the topic that we just covered was psychological profession, right? And I would encourage my students to use sticky notes, um, emojis like thumbs up and stars um, to come up with their key learnings and what are some new insights or aha moments that they have come up with from that class, right? And this thumbs up is just for the classmates to support or reinforce or if they find someone's uh, reflection very relatable to them, so they can just put a thumbs up near to that student's um, sticky note. I like it. Psychologists will make the world a better place. Here, here. <laughs> yeah, <this> one, right? <laughs> yeah. And so with that, um, that's a little bit of my sharing and what I normally do in my lectures. So I guess it's back to you then, Francis and Nuro. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joshua. I'm sure many of you have questions or you want to chat. Uh, that we've kept to the end. So we're just going to move on to the other two speakers. And when we finish, if you want to hang out with Joshua or, or, the, or, or the other two speakers, um, there will be an opportunity uh, after we formally finish. So Nurul, who have we got on next? Yeah, thank you so much, Joshua. That's awesome. I'm also picking up some new ideas from your presentation. Super cool. Okay, so we are going for the next speaker. But before that, please stay tuned because we're going to have an announcement from Isman and Joshua, uh, Joshua Davi, okay, uh, right after this speaker. My board is actually, when I reviewed that, I actually wanted everyone to I wanted to bring everyone to my board, but I, I wasn't sure whether I'm allowed to do so. So that's why I just prepped these slides and uh, I want to share how I use uh, Miro as a tool for me to achieve my aims uh, as a leader in my company. So that's that's like the gist of my of my talk today, my, my sharing today about uh, leaders and how I, I use I use Miro to to you know do things and uh, within my organization. Right. Next slide. Great starting slide. I'm, I'm a read. fan already. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Next slide. Good job. Okay, go. Before before I start off, maybe I'd like to just give a brief word about myself. So my name is Amir Shazlan. Uh, I've been working with software ever since I started work. Uh, I love I love doing software in anything, uh, either, either conversing people to build software, actually coding, testing software, getting it out to in the hands of people that uses it daily. So I, I've been very much involved in this software development space since, since my start of work. 
So I've, I've worked in every type of industry. My first company was a startup. Where, where I remember clearly the, the first day I came, uh, I reported duty at nine. My boss only came in at five o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> because it was his company. We only had four people, so he can come in and out at you know anytime we want. <laughs> but, but it was a really cool job where I learned to, to do everything, marketing, cold calling people, <laughs> uh, coding, uh, building servers and everything. That was really good job for me to, to start my career. But I was there two years, then move on to Messenagas, a middle range company, then moved to Maybank, then moved to BT, and now I'm with Petronas. So uh, all this all these um, stops in my career actually enabled me to learn and grow more. So along this one, I've always thought that uh, hold on to the idea that leaders, you know, you, you are a leader anywhere you are. Doesn't matter your role, your position, if you are you have the skills, you have attitude, aptitude and attitude, you can actually lead. Doesn't care about your role or your, your position. So that's what I try to do in my daily tasks. Lah, okay? uh, but in terms of the actual leading, I think this is my, in, in Petronas, where I actually have a big team to lead. I, I'm, I'm quite surprised actually because when I came to Petronas, I wasn't, I was supposed to do, to be, I was interviewed for another position, like, like a tester position. Suddenly when I came in, that position was filled in and the work was done. And now I had to do another thing, another stuff that was like totally beyond what I've experienced or worked before. But I just took it on and just roll with it. Lah. So that, that's my experience right now. So beyond, um, beyond working these companies I, or, or my, my work, I also, host a meetup group called uh, Ministry of Testing. So we have a column pro chapter where every month we try to run talks about software testing. And from there, I know just grab a uh, network of people and you know, just try to link all these testers together. So, so far, this is the only software testing based uh, meetup group. Uh, so I'm, I'm really proud to, to like run this show, the show with all my, my friends over there. All right, next slide. So talking about leaders, I think the, the word leaders itself, uh, there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of ways to slice leadership. You know, there's a lot of books that talks about leadership in a certain way, in a certain manner. So for me, for myself, I, I look at the word leaders and I like to build an acronym out of that. So that's why this mind map of uh, all, all all these words, you know, learn, empower, adapt, uh, delegate engage, reflect, and serve. All these, uh, you know, I, I actually try and, and apply in my daily work, okay? So let's go on to the first L, which is learning, okay? So when I came into Petronas, as I mentioned earlier, I, I was put in a position or in a role where I haven't been um, exposed before. Um, so I had to learn every day. Uh, being in a really huge organization, I actually have to you know, learn about procedures. Petronas has a lot of procedures, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, bureaucracy that I need to navigate, people I need to know. So every day there's something new to learn. And besides learning that, I need to also teach what I learned to other people who came after me, new guys, new 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 colleagues, new uh, new team members. So that's why there's a lot of learning every day that I need to do. And part of, part of one of the ways I need to make sense of all these learnings actually to have somewhat of a system. And we did a system that I built within this new organization. Miro plays a huge part in that. So I, I don't know, I can't remember how I stumbled. I think probably because of neural, I'm not sure. But ever since I use Miro, I actually uh, have a, a, a grown in love with the tool because it's been a, it's been a helpful um, tool for me to navigate this virtual uh, world where I can just pop up a board and then say, hey guys, let's go inside the board, let's brainstorm. So I use this tool a lot in my daily work. So the screen that you see right now is actually part of, uh, I think the newly launched Miro Academy, past couple of months, I guess, where people can learn how to you know, use Miro from the start, from the very basics, like pasting sticky notes up to the advanced level. So this is something that I encourage everyone here to you know just jump in. I uh, you know just register and then just try to take a look at this bite-sized bite-sized video from Miro Academy to just learn how to use Miro. So that's the first L to learn, right? 
Uh, second one is to empower. So what you're seeing on the screen actually is a KPI, uh, a KPI for a team member of mine, which actually when we first got the assignments, the KPI, it lived in Excel sheet. So it wasn't really expressive. It wasn't really clear what we need to do. Hence, I actually took the effort to build a, a KPI board for all of my team members, you know, and expanded it so that we, we can have a more wholesome conversation about uh, what we want, we're going to do, what targets we're going to achieve, and what you want to achieve personally in your career. So you can see there's a whole range of things we talk about. The boxes there are the actual goals for my department. But you can see on the left, on oh, sorry, on your right, that's like, what are your career goals? So to me, there must be like a balance between the company goals and what you want to achieve. And, and I understand for some people nowadays, they do stay in the company too long. Uh, so they want to like move on, learn and move on. So while the, with the time that we have, what can we do to achieve a balanced goal between your goals and, and the company goals, you know? So that is not visible in that uh, in that Excel, Excel sheet KPI. So that's why I use Miro to, you know, talk about people and then you know, what their aspirations are. And I try to empower them to, uh, so that they can achieve their goals, you know, within the scope of the organization. Uh, if you see the three things there, like the notes, like 20, 50, 25, tight, loose, tight, the two messages, these are like my, so like leadership framework that I explained to everyone. And that's like a, like a reminder to them, like if, we, if you need, let's, if you need to engage, engage me using this framework. So those are the things that uh, I put in my board. It helps the team to have a wholesome idea about the API, not just about numbers or figures, but you know, a bigger environment for people to talk and play with. And that's how I try to, to empower people by using a bigger scope of 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 of, of um, environment, a bigger play, playground, so to speak, for them to think about their KPIs and also to achieve them beyond what is in the KPI. Nuru, so can you Nuru, can you zoom in a little bit tighter and just pan across so that uh, our our audience can get a feel for? Or you can't go in any closer, is it, Nuru? But I think okay. once once it's it's in the board, so you can just. Zoom in later. Everyone can just zoom ah, in. Okay, we can go and check yeah. it out on the board later. So, sorry yeah. for the interruption, Amir. Okay, no problem. moving right on. All right, the next uh, the next uh, acronym is A. Is it D? I thought it's A. Oh, it's got jumbled up. <laughs> So the next acronym is A for ADAPT. So in my daily work, I actually work with a lot of teams to build uh, applications, i.e. the digital product for, for the business. So within, within this uh, building effort, there's always chaos because sometimes the business wants A, but over time while building A, sometimes they want B. So that's where we try to adapt to their needs and we have constant conversations over that. So there's a lot of, uh, frameworks that I use to discuss this. One of them is what we call impact mapping. It's one of the tools to, to determine whether or not what we're doing fits the goal that the business wants to do. So I use Miro as a, as a common ground for people to talk about. Once we see like we zoom into the red, let's see, let's say we zoom into the like, colored sticky notes like the uh, purple ones or the yeah. red ones at the bottom that we can discuss what is the impact of this addition to the application. Let's say we want to build a customized list. What does it bring? in terms of value to you and do you need do you need it now or you can have it later so we have all these conversations to to try and adapt to the business needs so again over here i use miro as a sharing as a common ground tool to people to see and visualize and you know uh, discuss, discuss more ver more verbally and more yeah. vibrant lah. that's why i use that's how i use miro and that's how i use uh, miro to to you know, adapt to situations okay next one is d the word D is what? <laughs> the word D is to delegate, actually. All right. So D is to delegate. Um, when I came in, I was actually working with my manager. Uh, my manager handles a lot of stuff, a lot of things. Suddenly, he was moved to another department, and I, I got bumped into his place, so to speak. So now I have like more things on my plate. So I actually have to 
use my map to track keep track of what apps or what products I need to take care which is like a lot so I'm still in my period of adjusting but in order for me to adjust I need to have a visual map of things that I need to to take care previously it was just small enough so that I don't have to have my maps but now it just grown exponentially so I use this uh, mirror tool to plot a mind map and then afterwards I actually reassign my teammates so that I can delegate my work to them uh, I, I don't want to to be a bottleneck to the team whereby all decisions come to me. So I, again, structure the team, put people in the right place, in the best place actually. And then from there, I, I start to delegate work. So this is how I use Miro to just do this work. Lah. And this is like also a conversation canvas between all my team leads and myself so that we see where we are, what's the status with this product or application and stuff. So that's how I use Miro to delegate my work. Yeah and at the same time empower them to to do their own decisions make their own decision and you know, grow as well uh next slide it, the word is e engage i guess yeah so engage is where i actually work with the business to you know uh get them get their ideas on board get their views so what you see over here is like a persona uh, persona activity workshop lah, where we first we usually do this to kick start a new app development activity so I use persona to just invite the users in and share their pain points share what they wish about this application uh, we, we spend normally one one and a half hours to do the, this exercise as a group and almost always uh, because these are business users they're not exposed to things <coughs> at the end of the workshop they say they, they are glad to use Miro because they've never used this kind of uh, visual collaboration tool and they're happy they can you know they can have detailed conversation they can see what the other parties are writing and riff off that in terms of you know what are their pain points and and, and we have we have a more collaborative environment to get details out these the these the, the specifics out from the users so that's why i i actually this is one of the first few exercises exercises i did on miro and this exercise actually made me the realize of realize the value of Miro and that's why I immediately subscribe as as a as a consultant now so that people can jump on board in my future projects other than use my trial version so I remember clearly this is one of the things where I see uh, the value of Miro and hence I constantly use this as an engagement tool lah, with the business to to you know get the ideas out uh, set set uh, ground rules or maybe uh, discuss other ideas you know so that's why uh, that's why I use this kind of uh, uh, this mirror to 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 work. Okay, and next is a couple more words is R I guess reflect. So um, to reflect, okay, uh, it's not just about uh, the daily things that we do. We need to reflect. We also sometimes need to reflect statuses of project. So I use mirror to sort of like. Uh, share the status of project and reflect you know what happened with uh, whatever we do whether it's hitting the milestone what's the hiccup you know then we reflect on that what's the issue with that um uh application what's the, what why is it not moving to the next swim lane then we go and reflect what we can do better so uh, again uh, this is example of how i use miro where we talk about statuses or application and and find back why we didn't do uh, the work that we need to do better or why they miss the timeline so this is a good reflection too and and i think uh, it also enhances conversation yeah uh, the last word for me is uh, surf s so to me surf means that we have a lot of stakeholders in our organization that we need to like cater or help yeah but i think primarily my my first thing, my first goal is to actually serve my my colleagues, my team members, the one I'm responsible for. So I need to make them successful in their work. I need to help them do their work better, faster. So that's how I see my 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 leader role here is to serve them. So if I serve them well, then my needs are served as well. My goals are served as well. And when my goals are served, then my organization goals are served. So in Petronas, we have a Petronas cultural belief that was, that's what we are seeing on the screen right now. So in every aspect of our work, we need to try and 
live out these cultural beliefs. So uh, with a good collaboration tool like Miro, it actually helps us to, you know, be uh, be more speaking up. And you know, with speaking up, we can have courage to act. So to me, I, I use I see Miro as an end to this, to live out our cultural beliefs. Yeah. A uh, couple more slides, and the last one is actually my, the last slide is actually my secret weapon. Can you go to the secret weapon slide? Kita is not moving today. Okay. To the right. Yeah. So actually, my secret weapon is not Miro. <laughs> my secret weapon is actually. Wait, hang on, hang on. <laughs> that? Yes. So my secret weapon is not Miro. My secret weapon is actually the Miroverse. So can we click the Miroverse, Nuru? So Miroverse is actually my playground to find out shortcuts to the frameworks or tools I need to do my work. So uh, if you guys go uh, to, the, to Miroverse, there's a lot of diagrams that has been uh, templates that has been uh, made by people who are experienced doing that. So actually, I jump off this to do my work. For instance, if you go up to the topic of... Uh, Which one? Brainstorming. What, brainstorming. Of icebreakers, maybe. Icebreakers. If you have a new team, they want to do icebreakers, you can just go here and you can just pick up any icebreakers that you feel fits your team and just jump off that. So you don't have to design from scratch, you know. Mm. You can just, just see the guides that is normally attached to all these templates and then create them, so duplicate them on your board and then just, you know, uh, work off that. So it's really a tool. Uh, this this is my secret weapon, I would say. So I like to just, you know, so on some weeks, I just go in and watch our newest template and from there see, you know, try off those templates where it's suitable for my work. And then I just, you know, keep that in my back. A lot of tools to use. So to me, this is my secret weapon, not Miro, Miroverse. So yeah, uh, that's all from me. Uh, I think the last slide, slide is just you know opening the floor to questions, if any. But I think this one we reserve at the end. Yep, that's it yeah. for me. Thank, Thank you so everyone. much. Thank you so uh, much, Amir. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So a lot of application. I don't have my own team members. So I don't really use it for my team, but this is something cool, right? And I'm sure there's a lot of leaders in the room, business owners who, you know, think, oh, Miro is only for training or something like that. But actually it's not. There are a lot, a lot of uh, ways to, to use it. Uh, and yeah. Okay. So we're going to save um, question uh, Q&A at the end of, of this session. And while Anand get ready for his, uh, oh, before that, let me stop share. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So while Anand get ready to with his uh, presentation, I would like to invite Isman and Joshua to make some announcement. Over to you, Isman. Uh, yes. Very very quickly. Uh, so uh, Nuru, you just can spotlight myself. So uh, if you if you've not heard about the APEC uh, chapter, that's Joshua. This guy over here. Uh, me and Joshua are the tech team on this. You, uh, yes, hello, Joshua. Where's Joshua? Let our, me... There he is. <laughs> and our next event is on the 21st of July, 5 p.m. And exactly what Amir just mentioned, how do you do leadership and people development uh, when we are all in hybrid and virtual workspaces? Uh, and, and that's going to be the topic on the 21st of July. Uh, I'll get you the link to sign up on uh in the chat in a moment uh but otherwise that's it back to you anything to say joshua okay you don't have time Joshua. Um, back to you Nero. joshua is in Gilbert's mouth so he couldn't speak <laughs> <laughs> that's jake oh, the okay. dog sorry jake uh i only see you. <laughs> okay thank you so much uh joshua and um his month so we look forward to to attend uh, remark in, in two weeks time and learn more and more from them. Okay, cool. So Anand, are you ready? Yes, I am. All good to okay, go. Okay, cool. You can share screen while I look for you and, and um, spotlight you. Okay. All right. 
Okay, yep, you got right. The shiny uh, head over there. <laughs> it's been spotlighted. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Nurul. And first of all, I'd like to thank all of you. And also, wow, a wonderful sharing by uh, uh, our friends earlier, Amir and also Joshua. I think I was also learning along the way. And uh, let me just share in terms of how I've been using uh, Miro uh, as a trainer, as a facilitator. Let me first bring up the screen so you can see a little bit better. And here we go. Well, first, a little bit about me. And uh, if you're noticing the fact that this mirror looks a little bit different, uh, I'm using it for the very first time because as we were uh, doing the activities earlier, I noticed that Isman mentioned that we can use the Miro app on the desktop. And I realized that I downloaded this months ago, but I never actually used it. I was always using the web version. So I'm using it for the very first time, exactly as the same thing that you see on the web, uh, except that uh, it is already on your a laptop, so it should be a lot more smoother, especially when you have a lot of people coming in your Miro board, you'll find that uh, it tends to lag a little bit. So it might be a, a good idea. That it, thank you so much, Iswan, for that. I will be using this for the next activities that I have for my sessions. A little bit of background by myself. I've been a trainer facilitator full time for uh, just over five years now. Uh, previously in my line of work, whether as an engineer, as a salesperson or even in academia, uh, I've always done some form of education or training itself as an engineer and in, in-house trainer, as a salesperson, uh, uh, training uh, medical personnel. I used to cover, uh, I used to do sales in the medical device industry and I was covering the southern region of Johor and Malacca. So my, that sort of training involved uh, training uh, doctors, specialists, and also nurses how to use the equipment that we were supplying them. Uh, it was always something that I loved, even though even when I was in employment, that training aspect. And about uh, in 2015, I had this wonderful opportunity to uh, go to the UK uh, for a year, uh, sponsored by Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, I received the Shevarding Award, and I did my Master's in Engineering Management over there. And when I came back, I decided, you know what, I really enjoy uh, training, and I sort of think now's the time for me to go into it full time. And I've been doing that ever since. So with regards to how I use Miro, well, I, I stumbled upon Miro uh, sometime uh, last year. In fact, uh, through discussions with uh, Nurul and a few, few other friends, because we are in a virtual uh, sort of community. And we were just discussing and finding out what are some of the apps that we can use to really enhance the experience of our participants. And uh, I came across Miro and the reason why I decided to just give it a go is because I was asked to run a program that involved business model canvas. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the framework and it, it, it is quite, quite a, a complex framework where you need to add in sticky notes here and there. And for this sort of framework, a Jamboard just does not work. Because as you have probably realized, one of the perhaps uh, supreme capabilities of Miro is the zooming in and out and the ability to uh, minimize your sticky notes so that you can fill, it, fill up a lot of sticky notes in a small space. And yet, whenever you need to read them, you just can zoom in and out and you'll be able to uh, still get those data. So that was when I first used it. And I've uh, fallen in love with Miro ever since. And I've been using it more and more for uh, my other training programs. So let me just go to the next area. And I'm just going to show you some elements in terms of how I have used Miro. I've just copied, uh, pasted these from other boards that I've actually used. And this would be how I would tend to start an ice breaking activity. Uh, if you notice, I have a instruction here, double click the sticky note with your name on it, add your short preferred name in brackets. So what I usually do is I'll get a list, name list of the participants that are coming for my program. I will already put those names uh, preloaded in sticky notes. The reason why I'm doing this is first of all, I want them to get used uh, to the Miro uh, template. How do you use sticky notes? How do you edit sticky notes? So this is already asking them to, or rather, uh, uh, teaching them how to edit your sticky notes. All I need to do is zoom into my name, for example, double click the sticky note, and I'll be able to put my short name in brackets. So that's the first task done. And then the other tasks are 
ask them to resize it and move it next to your birthday in the calendar below. After that, click the arrow, on, uh, or rather move uh, to the arrow on the right of the calendar that corresponds to your team number. Uh, in my actual instructions, it was a click, but I removed it for this session. So I'm just going to move this uh, next to my birthday over here. Uh, May 17th, save the date, everyone, especially those of you who know me, I'm expecting a gift after this. May 17th, all right. Next so, year, and then next year. Next year, yeah, we just passed it, right? About six, uh, six, six, six weeks or so. So uh, next, now find your name from the section to the right and fill in the boxes below your name. So next, we'll have a set of instructions, the same names I've already preloaded uh, with the full names of the participants. Uh, you might notice that the wording is quite small over there. That's done on purpose because I want them to experiment zooming in and out to read what are the instructions over here. So for example, for my case, place an image of someone famous you admire or respect. So this is where you will do the same thing uh, you did in the ice breaking session earlier, find an image. And what I normally tend to do is I also inform my participants when you are searching that image, I will ask them to move to an area that is empty on the board and paste it over here first, resize it over here and then bring it back over here so that you don't have that uh, wonderful chaos of what you experienced earlier of all those uh, pictures coming in there. Uh, but I mean, it, I suppose uh, for maybe first time users, uh, it, there could be a possibility that they find that intimidating, you know, suddenly their picture gets lost because it's overlapped by another picture. So that is something that I tend to do as well. Obviously, I always, I never share the link to the mirror board. I show them exactly what I want them to do. Only then I share the board. And even when I'm sharing it, I tend to share it in incognito mode on my browser because I want them to view the exact, uh, uh, I want them to see the exact view that they're going to see. If they're going to be viewing my board, I have certain options that they don't see. For example, I have things, uh, a few more options on the bottom left of your screen that you notice here that if you are joining in as a guest, uh, you probably won't see that. So I want them, I want it to be replicated as much as possible. Uh, so that is what I tend to do in terms of a best practice. Uh, so yeah, this is just some, some area for them to get uh, used to the setting. Uh, the next thing would be when we start going into activities, we tend to put our participants in teams and I will already then bring them to a board over here. And one of the great things that when we use Miro is sometimes my actual board size looks a little bit like this. So you can see boards all over the place, but you can actually set the view that you want your participants to see when they enter Miro. There is something called a set start view. When I click this, I can actually set this view over here. So when my participants click the link that I share with them in the chat box. When they click it, they will immediately come here. They will not be confused with the other boards around the, uh, uh, the, the landscape of Miro that I have. Uh, they will immediately see this particular frame. And I will already create some links to which they need to click which team, for example, they are. They just need to click and they'll go back there. So for, this, the, for the case of this example, uh, for this demonstration, I've just created the link for team one. So when I click this, it brings them to the board they will have to fill up. Uh, this was an example I did for a project management class uh, some time back. First thing, the instructions here, type your name in one sticky note. This will represent your color in this part of the activity. Now only use your chosen color when answering the questions below. The reason I'm doing this is uh, when I sort of harvest the information uh, from all different teams, I'll be able to also uh, know which participant contributed which sticky note because it is color coded. And this is vital information because they might be, for example, if I'm asking them to, what is one biggest challenge you face in your current work when it comes to projects? I would like to really identify the people who are sharing these particular challenges because then I can perhaps contextualize my learning a little bit and maybe help them uh, personally. So that's quite important uh, for me. Obviously, I start off with a little bit of a, 
uh, scenario here. Uh, the picture below represents a possible scenario in project management, comment on what you think is happening, why did it happen, how can it be avoided, etc. So they'll start off with just a light activity. You know what, how can they connect this with some of their uh, previous experiences in project management? Uh, we talk about the challenges here and here, uh, team activity. Discuss with your team and state below two possible project titles that can be used for our training program. Your projects must be related to your work and be general enough so that your fellow participants are able to relate to it and contribute as though it were a real project. So I'll ask them to give me two project ideas because I don't know their context. They are giving it to me. And when they contribute these two ideas, I will then get eight ideas because we have four teams and we'll be able to mix it up a little bit so that when we do our activities in the uh, project management training, we, I do not have to create a generic project scenario. We can actually use the projects that they have contributed, which is why I stated uh, the project uh, titles or themes should be general enough so that everyone of their participants, of these participants who are coming for my program, can at least have a sense of what the project is all about. So that's how I do it. Uh, if you notice what, uh, now another back, best practice that I actually learned from Nurul is to preset the uh, sticky notes for them to use. Uh, as you may probably be aware, many of these people might be using Miro for the very first time and you want to make it as easy as possible for them. They can always, of course, uh, click their own sticky notes and create it. But uh, something that we just want to make sure that it's easy for them to do is uh, pre-create those uh, sticky notes at the side of the board for them to pick up and use. The other reason why I've asked them to use this, of course, is because I wanted to follow the color codings that I've given. So if they use a color that I've not given, I do not know who that person is. So that's how we use it. And this would be an example of uh, for those of you who are familiar in project management, we have something called project initiation document. So we can just put all our ideas over here. This is something that I prepared for them in advance. Uh, once again, uh, just like what Amir mentioned earlier, Miroverse will be your super, uh, super weapon. Uh, even Miro itself have already tons of preset templates. And it really helped me in, in a particular course, in this particular pro project management course, because a participant asked me, you know, uh, these are uh, uh, fresh grads. They are new in terms of project management. And somebody asked me this question. Uh, he said, uh, I've heard of something called a Kanban board. Uh, can you just show, show us what it means or tell us what it means? It wasn't part of the training program because, uh, you know, in project management, we've got so many tools to use. I was not planning to show them what a Kanban board is. But the wonderful thing about Miro is they... I, I just realized that, you know, even though I have not had it in my slides, does Miro have something called a Kanban board? And oh, there you go. They have it. So I was able to demonstrate to this uh, person on the spot, how do you actually uh, use a Kanban board? And uh, let me just see. Was it loaded? Or did, I, did I load it or not? I was able to demonstrate to this particular participant uh, what a Kanban board looks like and how you actually use it. I didn't have to create a board just to show this individual. I could already uh, load a template that is available in uh, Miro. All right, and just a couple more things to share. Uh, this would be another example of how I've used Miro as well. A presentation skills energizer. Uh, what I do is after the lunch break, since it is a presentation skills uh, training where we're talking about communication, uh, we do an activity called impromptu speaking. And I will randomly select participants, ask them to choose the number. The great thing about Miro is we have this hide function. So you can prepare frames in advance and hide it from them because you don't want them to go into that board first. You want them to focus on their own board. So even in the earlier board that you saw the PID, the project initiation document, in the actual training program that I had, beside that board, uh, beside that frame, uh, I had other boards like uh, the work breakdown structure, the risk uh, assessment register, but all those were not available to the participants on day one of the training program because they were only going to be used on day two. When it needed to be used, 
that is when I opened the frame. So for example, in this particular example, uh, I would ask the participants, so which uh, frame uh, or which number do you choose? Okay, I choose number five and your topic would be this. What sport would your boss compete in if he were in the Olympics? Your two minutes, your time starts now. So it's, it's a wonderful energized activity in terms of uh, impromptu speaking. And when I want to close it, I'll just close it back. So yeah, that's a little bit about what uh, I normally have been using a uh, mirror for. Uh, so let me check if there's anything else that I wanted to cover. Mm, no, I guess that's about it. I know I in this short uh, space of time, I hope my demonstration here has given you a few more ideas in terms of the tools available uh, to use Miro for your own uh, participants if you are a trainer. And uh, as always, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, if you want to have more questions, I'm more than happy to uh, sort of uh, hear from you and also learn from you as well. Uh, back to you, uh, Nurul. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anand. Thank you so much, uh, Joshua. And thank you so much, uh, Amir, for such uh, insightful sharing.